January Journal 2021 Log Entry Day 15 Gratitude I woke up at the right time. Even though I had a strange night with horrible dreams, or I wouldn't call them horrible dreams, but quite uncomfortable. <sighs> it seems my sleep patterns will never get a cure. It will never get defined. Sometimes I will sleep in the middle of the day. But I am thankful that I can listen to my body and do what is best for me. And I am still creating the habit of waking at this time to record in the mornings when there is quiet and I can do what I have to do. I'm also drinking water in the mornings, which is something I never did. But I need water and I need to hydrate myself more often. So it seems that while trying to create one habit, my body is also trying to create other habits around it that are also healthy for me. I'm thankful for my automatic bodily functions to finally listen to what's best for me. I'm thankful for being alive. I'm thankful for my parents and my friends and all the people around me who are reliable people, honest people and those who really want the best for each other and are a good example for the rest of the community. Hardworking, creative, consistent. I'm thankful for all of you great role models out there. Today's topic is a little bit of an analogy. It's something that I wanted to practice just for the fun of it. And it's about the four elements of my story, trilogy, whatever. And yeah, the four elements, you know. <laughs> I went with the four elements instead of, let's say, the Asian five elements. Because first of all, I'm a Westerner and I don't want to fall into this occidentalist karma thing. So, again, it's all about honesty, and it's about balance. I was looking for all the pieces of the puzzle when it comes to like marketing this thing, because I suck at marketing, and I don't know how to sell myself or my products in a way that it's like, come on, buy my stuff, and here is my product. I, I suck at that. I try, and you will see in different occasions that I will try, but it's just not myself. So I was looking for alternative methods of understanding what the heck is going on with my story. Because the story in itself might be conventional, but the pieces of the puzzle are not as conventional as I think they are. Because when I talk about it to other people, they say, well, I have not read a story like yours before. It is something different from what I have read before. I don't usually read sci-fi, but this has me intrigued. I don't usually read sci-fi because I was not expecting something like this. I usually don't read sci-fi. I'm just hanging out with the wrong crowd if that's the only thing I hear. It's like I usually don't read sci-fi. I usually don't work with sci-fi. It's like sci-fi is an unwanted child here. It's like nobody wants to deal with this. I need to rework this. I'm going to talk about this in the future. So you might hear the same words in a few days. Sorry about that. This four elements analogy is like a puzzle that I was trying to put together. Because my story is not just sci-fi. If it were just sci-fi, it wouldn't be of the attention of people who don't read in the genre. So maybe when I try to show this to people who read in the genre, they will feel like, well, this is kind of like a strange sci-fi. I, I don't know. I'm afraid. I, I no longer know what people want. First of all, before sci-fi, this is an own voices work. It's own voices and not even completely because it's a dual POV, which one of them is very very own voices in more than just one aspect and the other one is kind of like a dark night where you can still see the moon so you can still see the own voices element in there but it's still dark it is something else completely is the contrast to the other pov so the own voices pov would be like the sun and the non own voices part would be like the moon that still retains a little bit of that own voices aspect because you know adopted abandoned outsider so it still retains the essence of the own voices without being, you know, biracial, disabled, blah blah. Own voices would be like fire, I guess? Light? It would be like the light provided for this world that I created. So this story would be like a planet and the own voices aspect would be like the sunlight, moonlight balance that comes into it every scene, every day, whatever. It's an analogy, I'm just experimenting here. Then there is another aspect 
that it's even stronger than sci-fi in some occasions and it's paranormal. Paranormal would be like water, you know, it would be the essence of life of this story because without the paranormal element this story would not be what it is. It can be many things but without the paranormal element this story is not what it is. So it is what it makes the story flow, it is the essence, the source of life of this story. So in that case I think this would be the element of water <laughs> because without water you can have a barren planet and there's just the ground and there's nothing there, there's no life. So that would be the element of paranormal. And then there is the sci-fi aspect which would be like the ground, you know, it would be this basis for the story because without the sci-fi element there would not be an explanation or a theory or a plausible idea that defines why is this story not a fantasy. For example, it is not a paranormal fantasy because I am going into the theory of genetic engineering and uh, other kinds of things that I'm not going to spoil right now, but it has to do first and foremost with genetic engineering of supernatural abilities and the setting is futuristic. The characters experience life in the space station, for example, so it is very sci-fi in many aspects, but it's not the typical let's invade other planets or kill the aliens or time travel. It's not the usual tropey popular movie sci-fi thing that people are accustomed to when they say, well, I don't really read sci-fi. It's not. So it is the basis for my particular story. It will be like Earth. It will be the rock that holds this thing together. Three elements. What's the fourth one? This one is the one that I am kind of unsure to mention it because first of all it could be misunderstood as uh, this girl is just becoming pretentious now. And another reason why I'm not so sure about mentioning it is because I don't know for sure. This comes from feedback that I have got from people who have read the story and people who like the story, people who know way more than I do about the craft and they say this is a story that it has its plot and it has its structure, but it's very much the character. And the way that you write it is leaning more towards literary than genre, which is scary because it means I have for sure been querying the wrong people. <laughs> and that's heartbreaking. That's what happens when you don't know what the heck you're doing. And it seems to be my case. So no, I am not playing pretentious here. In fact, this feedback of your story has a literary element is something I didn't see for myself. And it means that if I didn't see it for myself, I have been looking into the wrong places. Just for not knowing what the heck. So from what I understand, literary fiction cares about the quality of the prose much more than in a genre fiction story. They care about developing the themes and the essence of the characters and it's like supposedly they want to talk about like quote unquote deeper things. Ah, uh, that sounds pretentious, I don't like this. But at the same time, I realize why people are telling me that my story is kind of leaning more towards literary. It's kind of like in the middle. So there is, of course, all the genre aspects, paranormal, sci-fi, own voices, blah, blah. But it's about these two characters and their stories and their life conditions. It's about them. It's not about the typical sci-fi problem that I see in every story that I try to read. And I like it and then it... And then I get bored because the evil corporation from outside that's trying to win over some situation or whatever. Sci-fi has that major plot point that I get bored after a while because I'm tired of evil corporations. I want to know about regular people. Thank you. In my case, if I want to go the literary route, I have a lot of quote-unquote air pollution to clean off. <laughs> Because my prose is not that clean and my grammar is not that perfect because, again, English. So it would be this analogy of terraforming and cleaning the air for this story to have, you know, something from which people can appreciate it without me getting in the way as the writer. Because if literary would be the air element, 
It has to be something that doesn't get in the way, like the air. Air is always there. You cannot see it, you cannot grab it, you cannot judge it, it's just there. And I have to make sure that this particular element, which would be the prose, the most basic of all the things that people are going to take in, which are the words themselves, it has to be clean and it doesn't have to get in the way. Because if it gets in the way, it's like breathing polluted air, which means I have a lot of work to do. But yeah, those are the four elements of my story. This is the analogy of my story being like a planet that people are getting into. I don't know, it's just an experiment. I tried. I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, just let me know. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening.